Hey everybody. Hello, hello. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. I am super excited to do this batching class with you all today. Um, so just so everybody knows, there's a little chat box that if you want to say hi um, or say anything, make any comments throughout, you can go ahead and chat to me. I'll be checking that throughout our time together. So um, I hope that everybody is doing well out there. I want to send you all some love and affection because what a crazy time in our world, right? Um, and that's really the reason that I wanted to do this class today is that, you know, I had so many people coming to me just saying that we are now, or at least most of us are quarantined in our homes and not used to this environment in many cases. Um, even if you are used to working at home, you are probably not used to having spouses or kids around. <laughs> and, um, and so now our productivity has sort of plummeted. So I wanted to do this class because um, I love the technique that I use, that I've used for many, 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 many years. And my hope is that um, you guys can get some insight into that and be able to use it moving forward. Um, so the first thing I wanna say is that this is not a pitch class, meaning like at the end, I'm not gonna give you a sales pitch for something. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, um, but this is no strings attached. I'm just here today because I wanted to show up for you guys and chat for a bit um, and say hi. So, <laughs> and give you some goodness. So um, don't worry about that. Like, just hang out with me, hang on. Um, I won't take up too much of your time today. And that's that. So I'd love to um, hear where you're checking in from. Um, so, hey, Barb, Alice, Shelly, Marnie, um, Cornelia, uh, Brandy, Laura, Tanya. Um, Cornelia is in Romania. Wow, Barb, you're in Canada. Um, Laura is in Charleston, South Carolina. Yay, yay. I love it. We have people from all over. Like, how fun is that? Um, Laura Sassiella is New Jersey, Audra is Tucson, Polly is Winnipeg, Severine, France. Severine, I love your name. Um, Lori Palmquist is from San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, love it there. I used to live up there in Napa. <laughs> Jealous. Um, Wendy Honolulu. Oh my goodness, my best friend lives in Hawaii. Um, Susan is from Vegas. You are so close, Susan. Um, awesome. Well, I'm coming at you guys from Los Angeles, just in case you don't know. <laughs> so uh, we here are currently on lockdown orders from our governor due to the pandemic, of course. And um, I know that many of you are as well. I've actually been self-isolating, though, for about a week before we got the order. Um, I guess because I'm a writer, <laughs> I'm kind of isolating all the time. So, uh, so it's, it, maybe it just felt a little natural to me. I'm not really sure. Um, but I actually typically work outside of my home. Uh, I do rent an office space normally. And so where you're seeing me now, funny enough, is this office space. It's actually our storage space in our house that my sweet husband built out for me um, as a studio. So you're looking at me. I have a white wall in the background. There's studio lights in front of me. But like if I turn the camera, it's just like all of our storage. So it makes me laugh that I'm down here. It's hysterical. But you know what? We do what we can do. Um, and do you want to say hi to my puppy before we get started? Hold on. Let me grab her. Lily, come here. Come here. She was like sleeping tight. So here is Lily. She's got sleepy face, but she, I promised you guys you would have a puppy hug or a puppy snuggle. So this is my little baby Lily. Okay, we'll let her go back to sleep. And we'll go ahead and dig into batching. Um, so like I said, we have lots of folks, maybe this is why you're all here today, um, who are struggling with productivity and focus right now. Now, obviously, we are all dealing with like loads of different situations that are pulling at our time. Um, and then when we do have pockets of time, it's so easy to get caught up in like, what do I do? Like, how do I make the most of this time? And then before long, you're like scrolling Instagram and thinking about what you want to do and then like that time has passed and then you've done 
nothing of what you wanted to do, right? And I have been there as well, so I get it. And so that's why I wanted to introduce you to the concept of batching, or maybe you already know what batching is and you've never tried it, or maybe you know what batching is, but you just can't make it work for you. Like you've tried it and you're like, meh, the same for me. So I want to try to turn that around for you today. Now, before we dig in, um, if you don't know me, I know a lot of you do. Some of you may have never met me before. Um, I'm a publicity strategist, and I started my career in corporate. I used to work in automotive and pharmaceuticals crazy. Um, and then I like fled from, <laughs> from that work. And I started my own consulting business about 12 years ago. Um, then a few years ago, I used to write fiction just for fun. It was like escapism for me um, from a typical work day. And, and I ended up writing a screenplay on a whim. And that ended up turning into, well, I made it turn into, I should say, a full career. Um, and now I have five produced movies and a TV show that I sold. Um, so screenwriting is now like a bona fide full division of my business, which I'm super proud of and excited about. And so um, what I really do is I marry the two worlds of um, marketing and branding and publicity with my screenwriting work to really help people build obsessed fan bases and audience audiences for their work, leading to more signups and sales and fan mail. Um, I basically love helping people become just as binge worthy as a Netflix show, which now that we're all home, we're probably binging a lot of Netflix. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Um, I can honestly say that I'm very, very busy, right? I, I have a, a very uh, robust business with lots of things going on. And the concept of batching, the productivity technique of batching is really what I attribute that success to. It's, it's allowed me to be so productive, to be so accomplished over this time and still have lots of time for self-care and family and friends, et cetera, and like puppy cuddles. <laughs> so, um, and really right now, batching is keeping me grounded and focused and calm in these like very chaotic times. So if you don't know what batching is, batching means that you work on one project in one long uninterrupted burst. So it's like baking a batch of two dozen cookies all in one go instead of individually baking 24 cookies separately on 24 different days, which would be really daunting, right? And it's safe to say that, like, I am totally obsessed with the concept of batching. Um, just to give you a quick example, and I'll be leading you through some more examples later, um, if I'm batching, let's say, a month's worth of newsletters for my audience, which for me, that's four because I send out one newsletter a week, that means that I'm going to block out about three to four hours in my day just to write newsletters. No email, no phone, no social media, no Wi-Fi if I can help it, um, no popping over to check on a screenplay or write a few words or peeking at some other project. It's just focused on newsletters. Now, batching is really a simple concept. It's an obvious concept. Focus on one thing at one time, but it's so life-changing. And it also means that you'll be working less and with less stress, <laughs> which is exactly what we all need right now, am I right? I like to think of batching sort of like a mini workcation. So it's kind of like feels like an escape when you do it right. Um, and by right, I just mean doing it in a way that feels pleasurable for you. And we're going to go through what that looks like. And then you can create your batch time however you want. Your challenge here is just to focus intently on one project at one time while working at a sane and pleasurable pace. And when you do that, you might be really surprised by how much you can accomplish in one sitting when you're really, really actually focused. So I wanna talk about creating your ideal batch day. This is the most important piece here, is setting up conditions um, so that you can succeed and excel at batching in your own work. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is a test drive day. So the most common thing that I hear from people when they say batching doesn't work for me is because they haven't tested it. 
So what will happen is they'll go into a batch day um, or even a chunk of time that they're batching. So maybe they can't block off a whole day for a project, but maybe you're only able to block off three hours. Okay, fine. But what you don't want to do is go into whatever time you've set aside and reserved for yourself with incredibly rigid goals and expectations up front because most likely you won't accomplish those very rigid goals and expectations on your first try. And then you walk away feeling like a failure. It's like, well, I intended to go in and write six blog posts, but I only wrote one. What the hell? Right? <laughs> so, so then it feels like you're a failure. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want you to be defeated before you even really give this process a go. So what I would recommend is on your first time batching, or even if you've batched before and it hasn't worked for you, like still do a test day. Let's just hit the reset button and do a test, okay? And what I want you to do is try to block out as much time as you possibly can. That might be a full day. It might be a morning. It might be an afternoon. It might be two hours. It, you know, there really is no right or wrong answer here. It's just about being mindful and being honest with what you can accomplish in that period of time. And that's what your test day is for, to see what's possible. Now, once you decide how much time you can put aside to batch a project, I want you to protect this time like it's a crucial doctor's appointment. I don't want you to take phone calls, no interruptions, no kids, no dogs, well, maybe a dog, but only if they're not, <laughs> only if they won't interrupt you. Um, no spouses, uh, no partners, no beeping texts on your phone, um, no Wi-Fi if that's a major distraction, but you might need it for what you're doing. So if you need it, keep it. The point is um, that you want to eliminate as many distractions as possible. And I know that this can be really difficult right now because most of us are homebound, right? Um, but I'll tell you, I have a student in one of my classes who literally just did a batch day and she had blocked off three hours for herself. And what she did was she locked herself in her walk-in closet and she set up like a cozy little space with like pillows on the floor. And she told her family, you got to leave me alone for these three hours. She brought her coffee mug in there. She sat, she relaxed, she played music, she made it her own and she was able to accomplish things. Now I know that that's not ideal, no, we don't want to be working in our closet. Do I want to be working in my storage space? Not really, but you know, look, this is what we're, <laughs> this is what we're doing. This is what we're up against right now. Um, so my point is that I realize that it is very difficult, but once you block that batch time, it's your job to protect that time. And so that means to really communicate with your family and whomever else is around and say, listen, I block this. I really need this time with no distractions. So I'm going to go in this room or this space and I can't see you until this time, right? Again, realize that on test drive day, this may not work out perfectly, but that's okay, right? You are practicing protecting that time. You're practicing protecting your boundaries. Now, like I said, for this test batch day, don't set rigid goals for yourself. I don't want you to go into this day and say, I'm going to write 10 blog posts or else, right? I just want you to settle down, get focused, pick one thing to work on, and say, cool, I've got X number of uninterrupted hours and time stretching in front of me. What can I accomplish in that time, right? And then just get to work. And please do feel free if you're booking a long period of time, like an entire day, um, to sprinkle breaks. So you want to get up and take a walk. You want to have lunch. You want to get coffee. You want to stretch. So We'll talk more about that in a minute, but I certainly don't want you to be like stuck in a seat and not moving because that's not going to make anyone feel productive. <laughs> and all you're looking to do in this first test day is see how much content you can realistically create in one day without pushing or straining yourself, okay? Um, and then at the end of the day, I want you to lean back with pride and 
take stock of what you've created. Like, what was it? Did you uh, write one newsletter? Did you write four? Did you uh, write an outline for an online course that you've been wanting to teach? Did you write a sales page? Did you write a rough draft for a sales page? Um, whatever it is, right? Just tally up what you've created and then you've got like a nice ballpark of what you can create in a certain window of time. So now your test drive is complete, okay? You know what you are realistically able to create within that day. Okay, so the second thing that you wanna do is right after you do your test day, I want you to plan your second date. So this is like you just went on a first date <laughs> and your first date was with a project and you had your first date and first dates are always awkward and things always tend to like not go as planned, which is why I say don't go in with rigid expectations. And then I want you to plan your second date. Now that you realistically know how much you can accomplish, you want to schedule that next batch of time. Okay. Now this time you'll be more informed as to how much you can accomplish, right? So if you blocked off a series of hours and were able to write four blog posts, for example, then you know you're going to be able to do that again. Okay. So it allows you to start to get more smart with your batch time. Like I can accomplish this, I can accomplish that. So this is just about having that second date. Again, I wouldn't make it incredibly rigid, like allow yourself um, that space to play and, and just realize that it doesn't always execute perfectly every single time. Um, but allow that second day to happen, allow that time to flow, but you'll be more informed on that second date, just like a real second date. Okay, and then the next step is, you know, start batching everything that you possibly can. So once you start to get the flow of using batch time, staying incredibly focused and productive, and I'll give you some more guidance on that in just a few moments, um, I want you to think about essentially everything that you can batch, because if this productivity technique works for you, then you can start incorporating it in all areas of your life. So I essentially batch like my entire life. So I don't just batch content like newsletters, blog posts, social media, et cetera. I also will batch like my workouts or my coffee time or my breakfast. Uh, and this ensures that I'm getting in my work, I'm getting in my self-care, I'm getting in family time, right? And I'm going to show you some examples of that at the end of this training. Um, you may just want to start off, like I said, with one project and not your entire schedule. Like just start to, you know, pick one thing that you're wanting to make some forward movement on. So for example, if you are somebody who always feels like they're behind on your content, and what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you have an email list and you haven't reached out to them in months, and or maybe you um, have a social media account like on Instagram and you haven't posted anything in a while, and now you're kind of like, I, I just never have the time, or I don't know what to say, et cetera, et cetera. Well, batching is an ex excellent way to start to get ahead of the game on those things so that you never feel like you're behind. And that's why I love using it. I mean, I, I really started using it for content purposes because um, I never wanted to feel like I was behind. I always want to be, you know, a few months ahead so that I'm not like struggling or rushing to come up with something that is crucial to communicating with your community as a business owner. Um, okay, so then once you start to get better and better and better at this, like once you really start to get the knack of batching, then I would recommend starting to schedule your batch time about a month in advance, okay? You're going to schedule it on your calendar just like any other vital not miss appointment. Um, if you, you know, are planning just to batch like one project, if you don't want to use it for your whole life, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, that actually makes it really easy because you can just say, well, I want to um, make sure that I get ahead on my content. So that means that I want to send out this much content in a month. I did a few test batch days, so I know how long it takes me to create that content. And now I can block off that time in my calendar so I'm ahead of the game, right? Or if you want to try batching everything like I do, um, you can sketch out your schedule and batch everything 
a week ahead. So you don't have to do your entire schedule a month ahead. That would probably be impossible. Um, but doing it a week ahead, I like to sit down on Sundays and plot out my week and make sure that I have little pockets of time pockets of batch time for everything. Um, the really important part to remember, and I know I keep saying this, is when you create time, that batch time, you want to do everything possible not to break that appointment. You need to show up for yourself and show up for your business, show up for your community, show up for your family, show up for your self-care, right? So all of these things are very important. And so um, you want to make sure that you keep that time and honor that time as best as you possibly can. Okay, so now let's get into uh, what can really make your batch day feel or batch time feel pleasurable. Okay, so I know that things are insane right now in the world. We all know that. So Stuffing yourself into the corner of your home is probably not going to feel incredibly pleasurable. Like I said earlier, is this my choice of place to work? Not necessarily, right? It's kind of cold down here. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I'm surrounded by, I'll take a picture for you guys and send it with a recording video. Um, but I'm like, because so, I don't want to mess up with the lights, but <laughs> I'm surrounded by like just our junk essentially. Um, and I'm in, but I'm in a really cozy chair and I have a nice backdrop and, um, you know, you're I'm just rolling with it. And so I totally get that this may not be your most pleasurable batching conditions right now, just because of the state of the world, but just know it can only get better from here. <laughs> just know that right now we may be working out of corners of our homes, but you know, once cross our fingers, everything starts to even out and we start to move ahead and progress with things, then many of us will be going back to, you know, our lives and our workspaces, et cetera, um, that will be just like they were in the past. So for now, I want to just honor that I get it, that we are all working in um, conditions that we're not used to. And so I understand if it's not your most pleasurable of all time place. Uh, and I say that because usually my most pleasurable place to like batch, particularly to, to write, is either in my office or at a coffee shop. And those places are not accessible to me right now. So I completely understand. But I do believe that you can create a space no matter where you are. So let's talk about that. So the first thing is, I've said it before, I have to repeat it again because um, I think it really is the most important, is the elimination of distractions. This is why also I'm really passionate about doing a test batch day because um, we don't often know all of our distractions. So I bet you, um, if I asked you right now, what are your most common distractions that keep you from getting your work done? You'll have things that come to your mind right away, right? Um, is it dogs? Is it, um, you know, your spouse, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera? Um, you know, what is it? Like, what is distracting you? And and then you may discover additional distractions as you go about your time, right? So you may discover like, wow, I, um, I have my social media open and I didn't even realize that. Or I had my phone on and, and my text was going off or people were texting me the entire time. Or I have these notifications set up on things and they're just going, going, going. Um, so I want to make sure that, you know, whatever your distractions are, that you are cutting them out, uh, turning them off. And like I said, some you'll know right away and some you necess won't necessarily know. Okay. The next one is pleasure breaks. So um, pleasure breaks are so key for batch time because your brain is not designed to power through the entire day nonstop without resting. Your brain's a muscle and like every muscle in your body, it's capable of doing really amazing things, but it also requires periods of rest to reboot, recharge, revitalize. So I call these little brain boosters or brain reboots pleasure breaks. And batch days are definitely time or batch time is like definitely a productivity focused time. We've talked about this. It's, it's about getting stuff done, let's be honest, but not at the expense of burning out, 
So I want you to make sure that you are taking regular breaks throughout that time. Get up and stretch, get up and walk, eat some chocolate, get a cup of coffee or tea, like whatever feels pleasurable for you. Um, just make sure, you know, if you have any more booked than like two hours that you're standing up and taking a break. Um, I would say if, you know, ideally we get up and at least like do a quick stretch every hour, but I know sometimes you're in the zone and you don't want to do that and I get it. Um, but like try not to let two hours go by without you having some sort of movement. I don't care if that movement is like playing musical chairs, it's just <laughs> walking around um, or, you know, just a quick stretch or a quick walk around the block if you're able to, depending on where you live. Um, or, you know, just, just go grab some water or something. Like, make sure that you're taking a break. And a break that feels good for you. Now, is that break going to be like watching a whole Netflix show? Probably not, because that may jostle you too far outside of your focused work time. Um, but like I said, just find pleasure breaks, things you can do in like 10 to 15 minutes that are just quick boosters. For me, that's usually a quick walk or a quick stretch or coffee because I'm obsessed with coffee and I drink it constantly. All right. Also, surround yourself with goodies. So um, make your workspace more pleasurable. And like I said, I know this is challenging right now because we're all working in very strange spaces, most likely. Um, I like brought my, I have a bunch of candles, but like I just brought a soy candle down here um, and I don't have it lit right now, but, <laughs> but I will light it at some point in the day, usually like early in the morning. I'll light it for a while, um, and that feels good for me. I usually have coffee. Right now, I just have water, so I don't have any coffee to show you because I already had three of them, um, but I usually have coffee. Sometimes I have chocolate or like another snack. Maybe you want to play music, and that feels good for you. The point is just to make your space feel good, even if you are like contained in a corner of your home. There's always a few things that you can take with you. I have my favorite pen. It's got cute little polka dots on it. Um, I have my planner here, which I'll hold up in a minute. So again, just making it pleasurable for you. Okay. So the next one is creating from the heat. So this is probably the most important part of successful batching. Um, the biggest thing I think that I hear from all of my students and clients that batch is that they went into their batch time and they sat down and they had all their conditions set and they told everybody to go away and all the distractions are off and then they just weren't feeling it. They're staring at a blank page or they're like looking at the project that they had planned to work on and they're like, eh, just no, not for me. <laughs> this ain't my day. And what I want to say is that this is, this is common. This happens for a lot of people. If this has happened for you, don't feel bad because this has happened to all of us at some point. But this is why I recommend that you go into your batch day in your heat zone. Okay, so let's talk about what the heat is. So the heat, it's just a term that I made up basically. Um, and it really just means creating from a state of elevated emotion. So this could be like happiness or frustration or you're electrified with excitement. It's that feeling that you get when like your fingers are flying across the keyboard and like you can't get the words out fast enough and you're just like totally on fire with whatever you're working on. That's what you want to create from. That's what you want to summon in your batch day. It's the zone that you want to create everything from, like your free content that you send to your audiences, like newsletters or social media. It's definitely the zone that you want to create your offers in. You want to make sure that if you're writing a sales page or emails for a launch or even creating the offer itself, whatever that may be, if you, you're creating a workshop or a class, like you want to be on fire, right? Because people will feel that emotion on the other side, even if you think you're hiding it. Um, if you feel very like blah about something you're creating, everybody else is going to feel blah too. So you want to make sure that you are what I call obsessed with what you're doing um, because that obsession will curl around and other people will feel it and they want to be a part of that. So um, there are some ways that, that I recommend you can kind of summon this feeling of heat. Um, 
one way is just to make sure that you go into your batch day prepared, right? So one thing I hear very often is that a lot of people like to use batch time to create content, to create free content for their community, um, whether it's newsletters, social media posts, etc. That's pretty much what I specialize in. Um, and then what'll happen is they'll go into their batch day and either they're fresh out of ideas, like, I don't know, I don't have anything I want to talk about or write about. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just blank. Um, or they'll go into the time with like some ideas that other people have given them. Like maybe somebody up here or somebody said, oh, you should write about this or, oh, you should create this or you should be doing this more on social media, but they're really not feeling it. And then they go into their batch time and they're like, okay, so-and-so said I need to create this, but like, I really don't want to. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to give you all permission right now. You don't have to do what anybody else says. Like, this your business. This is you. Like, everybody else needs to just zip it, okay? You do you. And so if you are not feeling it, even if somebody else said you should write this because, right? Anytime you hear that like should phrase, I feel like you should have a little red flag anyway of like, why should I? <laughs> you know, even batching, if this doesn't resonate with you, you don't have to do it, right? There's no should here. It's just if it works for you, my hope is that it does. Um, but it's really just about if it works for you and to give it a shot and see if it does. What you want to create, especially when it comes to content for your audience, is things that you actually care about. Like, what actually heats you up? What gives you that uh, heightened emotion? What electrifies you, right? And me personally, those types of things, those things that heat me up, those things that electrify me, don't usually come when I'm sitting in front of the computer staring at it and wondering what to write about that I, I've never been able to create from that space. It's always when I'm like out on a jog or like in the shower is when these ideas come. And so what I'll do is I always have a running list of ideas. I keep them in a Google doc on my computer, nothing fancy. I do not have a fancy system. I don't like fancy systems either. They're like the death of my creativity. So I just keep everything real simple. So I keep a running list of things, you know, ideas that pop to me. I'm like, oh, I got to talk about that. Or like, oh, this happened and pissed me off. Or like, oh my gosh, I found this and it was amazing. I can't wait to tell my community. So those kinds of um, heightened emotions, like I said. And I'll keep a running list of that. And so then when I, you know, go into doing my batch time to create content for my community, I have a list prepared, right? What I'll do is I'll sit down, I'll comb through the list. I'll go, yeah, I'm not really feeling that one anymore. Mm, no, no, that's not light me up. Oh, that one. Yes, that one. Ugh. And then I'm flying across the keyboard, right? Um, so that's the way to do it is like come in prepared, come in with ideas, especially if you are batching content. This is really, really key. Here are some other ways that you can access your heat before you batch anything, right? Because you might not be batching content. You might be batching something totally different. So the first thing is um, really reminding yourself what is your why. So when I say what is your why, I just mean why are you doing the work that you do, right? Um, remind yourself why that is. Like there's always a deeper reason. It's, it's not, it may be on first glance, you might say, well, I'm doing this because I want to earn a living, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, of course. Like we all should be earning a living. Um, one of my lights just went out. <laughs> if you saw me get a little dark. Um, so we all should be learn, learn, earning a living, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But what is your why? So the why is always deeper. It could be, I'm doing this because I want to earn a living, but I'm also doing this because I care X, Y, Z. Okay. So for example, I'll tell you my why. My why, um, why I do the work that I do is because all of the students, clients, subscribers, et cetera, people in my audience, followers, et cetera, come to me because they are exhausted by marketing gimmicks and advice out there that just feels icky or like doesn't work for them. And they're just exhausted by it. They're like, so-and-so said I had to do this, or I did this and it, they said I had to do this. And it starts to be like 
someone came in the room for them and popped their balloon and all the fun was like sucked out of their business. And so by the time they come to me, they're feeling that way, maybe about their entire business, or maybe they're feeling that way about certain pieces and parts of their business, like their content or like their offers. Right. And so I'm really passionate. My why is I'm super passionate about helping them to discover ways to market and promote their business and their offers and create content from a place that feels natural, pleasurable, and like actually freaking fun. And this leads them to successful launches and signups and sales and fan mail and, and happy customers, not crickets. And even more importantly than all that, they actually enjoy their business, right? Because like, what are we doing here if you hate what you're doing? Like the reason that we're entrepreneurs is because we get to choose, right? We get to create whatever we want. Um, so if you're feeling like that creation is, well, uh, I don't want to do this anymore, <laughs> then that's where I come in. And that's my why. I'm very, very passionate about that. It's usually like at least 20 times a day that I want to like take somebody by the shoulders and shake them and be like, I have a better way. Um, and that fires me up. So anytime I go into batching, which is really all day, like anytime I'm batching work that has to do with the marketing and publicity division of my business, I think about that. I'm like, oh, you know, so-and-so this just happened to her. I remember when my client told me this and, um, you know, and it made me like, again, like I said, want to take them by the shoulders and like, let me help you. And that will fire me up. Now, a couple other ways could be um, think about your industry, right? So like what's going on in your industry, um, whether you're in fitness or art or music or coaching or whatever you're doing, right? What frustrates you in your, in, in your industry and why? That might be the way to access the heat when you go into your batch time. If you think about, um, and I have an awesome client, her name is um, Nikki Nab Levy, and she's a... Um, She's a coach. She's a Pilates. Well, I'm going to mess this up. She's a Pilates trainer, but she's also um, a podcaster and she helps other Pilates trainers to like become more successful. And so she has all these great things that she does. And I know um, a big thing for her is like, this is a way she can access heat all the time. Because she'll think about her industry and there's a lot of things that happen and a lot of opinions floating around and a lot of people that are shaming others for things. And it, it fires her up because she's like, why? It shouldn't be like this. Like we should be supportive of each other. And so it's always a way she can quickly access her heat. Um, another way that you can access the heat is thinking about your clients and customers and what are some things that they do that make you go like, oh no, don't do that. There's a better way, <laughs> right? So I bet you, as soon as I said that, most of you are probably like, oh yeah, <laughs> I've thought about that. So if you just think about that prompt, like when you go in your batch time and you're like, Ugh, my clients always say this or believe this about themselves. And I just wish they knew there was a better way, right? That can be something that really accesses the heat. Um, and then another way would be like, what are your turn-ons in business or life, right? So this can be useful if you're batching something that is not uh, business related even. So it's totally relatable and useful for business, but it's great like if you're doing something that's not business related because let's say it's um, you want to like you, okay, I'll use my own, exa own example. Like I always wanted to write like a really ridiculous romance novel for teenagers and, um, and I'm like really lit up about that. Like I love reading like juicy romance novels for teenagers, even though I'm not one. Um, and, and so like the thought of writing one and crafting my own story was just like so fun for me. And it was a huge turn on. And so it was a great way to go into batch time because I could just think about that and be like, oh yeah, I can't wait to create these characters. And it actually spilled over into another uh, area of my life. I ended up working out more when I was writing this novel because I would get my best ideas when I was out jogging. So it made me want to jog every day because I'm like, oh, I can think about my novel. Like I'll have a whole hour or 90 minutes or whatever just to like think about my novel. And so I was able to kind of spill it over into my exercise batch time. 
So again, just a way to like access that heat that I was talking about. And then the final way is um, thinking about like your secret dream. So this is really a great one if you are using batch time to make forward movement on a bigger project. So let's say you've always dreamt of writing a book nonfiction, fiction, whatever, um, or a screenplay, or maybe you've always dreamt of starting your own YouTube show or your own podcast, or um, maybe you would love to like book a TED talk someday. You know, something that's like this dream that kind of exists beyond what the structure of your business is, um, but you have never carved time out for it, but it's always in the back of your mind. Like, oh, I really want to do this. Okay. So that could be a number of things. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever that like secret dream is for you. And if you're using your batch time to make forward movement on that dream, you know, this is a great way to access the heat because right when you go into that, you just remind yourself of what that secret dream is. Like allow yourself to fantasize. What does that look like? What does it feel like when you step on stage at a TED talk? What does it feel like when your book comes out and you're out doing a book signing, right? So kind of like think through that. Um, I used to, when I was writing my very first script, which I was not paid for, by the way. This was just like a sample. I was teaching myself how to write screenplays. Um, I created this like vision board with pictures of what I thought my characters would look like and pictures of what I thought the setting would look like. And it was so fun because I could go into that batch time I had set aside for myself to write a screenplay and um, just look at that and go, I can see it. Like I can see my show just right here on this board. It felt really exciting. Okay, so now to kind of wrap all of this up, I want to just verbally walk you guys through two different batch days. So um, one will be like a regular work day for me and um, how I batch my time throughout that work day. And then the second one will be um, a batch day that I would use just to create content. So I want to just show you guys two different breakdowns or walk you through two different breakdowns so that you understand um, what that looks like. So. I will, I'm going to take like pictures of this and send it with the recording so you can see them. So don't worry if you can't see it on the screen. I'm just holding it up just quickly so you guys can see. So I'm a hard copy planner girl. Um, I hate electronic planning. <laughs> it's like, so I thrive in hard copy. I use this planner. Um, it's called the Lean Out Planner. It's awesome. I love it so much. And I love it because it has like single days so that you know, when I can, I have like all this space to put all my batch time. So like I said, I'll send this to you guys. Don't worry about it. You could take a peek, but I just want to walk you through it right now, like what it looks like. So on a normal work day, um, I like to try to batch everything I possibly can. So it just means like time blocking. It's, it's blocking off time to work on a project completely focused. That's all batching is, right? And I like to have sort of three goals on regular work days. One is to make forward movement on some kind of project that I'm wanting to bring to life, right? Usually that's like a new offer of some sort, but it could be something else. Um, I also like to plant seeds. So that's like the marketing time of my day where I'm planting seeds to uh, try to get more visibility and exposure for my business and um, community connection. So just connecting to either my existing community, my students, clients, um, or new people in my community. Okay. So a regular work day, this is just an average kind of regular work day would be, I get up at 630 in the morning, wake up, coffee always first. <laughs> Very important. Then from about like 7 a.m. to 8, I do a doggy hike with my husband and I have three dogs. Even though you only saw one today, you only saw Lily, uh, my little Shih Tzu. I have an Australian Shepherd and a Belgian Malinois. My Australian Shepherd is really old so he can do like one block, but my Malinois could do like 10 miles and never get tired. Um, and Lily can do like, she's decent. She's like pretty awesome. She could do some, but she can't do as much as my Malinois can do. So, um, so we kind of have to vary their walks a little bit, but ultimately we're spending about an hour doing that exercise. And I'm, I really like doing exercise in the morning. So that works out well. 
Then from about 8 to 9 a.m., I have my breakfast and I'll get ready for the day, whatever that looks like. I mean, I don't do much to get ready, honestly. I'm not, it doesn't take me very long um, because I mostly just work from home and I'm writing. And, you know, even when I'm on video with you, I, I, I'll put a cute top on or something. But um it doesn't take me all that long. So, you know, but so I can know that that's that hour slot will be more than enough. Now, I do want to point out that it's nine o'clock by this point, right, in my schedule that I'm sharing with you. And I haven't checked email, I haven't checked social media. I do this on purpose because it keeps me really sane and focused. Um, I find that as soon as I go in my inbox, it doesn't stress me out in any way, but it will take my focus and attention away. So as soon as I see something, it's like I want to respond to it or I'm thinking about how to respond to it or maybe to multiple things. And so I try to just stay out of that. Like it's, it's just not going to work for me before 9 a.m., no good. Um, so sometimes after I sit down to work, the first thing I do is check email, but in in most cases, it's not. I usually wait a little later to do that so that I can actually make some um, movement on something that I'm doing, right? Or maybe I have a meeting. I have a lot of meetings in the morning, so it just sort of depends. Um, so now on this day that I'm sharing with you, after I get ready, I have my breakfast, um, I go right into a virtual development meeting. So for the screenwriting division of my business, I have a lot of meetings. They're called development meetings. They're with producers, usually multiple, or sometimes they're with net, with network people. Um, and so they happen really often. So that would be about two hours. So from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So I block that off. You know, I that meeting is there. It's easy to block off. Okay. And then from about 11 a.m. to noon is when I actually go in and check my email. Email, I check social media, and I usually check in with my Obsessed community. So Obsessed is my online course. Um, it's my signature online course, and it's where um, I help people to create Obsessed fan bases for their work. And I love that class and I check in with them every day and just kind of see, you know, does anybody have any questions or we have prompts a lot throughout the week, like where people are sharing what they're making space for, what they're celebrating, or um, maybe we're doing a, a community batch day in there. So I'm always checking in just to see what support they may need. So that's what I do. Then from about noon to 1 p.m., I have lunch. Then after that, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. is where I set aside time to make forward movement on a project. So like I said, um, so for this project, the one that I've been working on this past week is I'm putting together a content mastermind. So this is for people who, you know, want to batch their content all at once. They don't want to be stressed constantly that they have nothing to send to their community. They want their content to work better for them. They want to have more fun creating content. Um, and so in this batch day example I'm sharing with you is when I created an outline for this mastermind. So it was forward movement on this project that I know I'm going to be bringing to life within the next couple of weeks. And then from 3 to 4 p.m., I batch time to plant seeds. So planting seeds is, again, like I said, getting more visibility for my business. And so for me, one of the ways I do that is by being a guest on podcasts. That works really well for me. Different things work well for different people. There's lots of strategies to promote our businesses. Um, podcasts has always been a great strategy for me. So what I do is I spend that time from 3 to 4 p.m. to pitch new podcasts, follow up with hosts or producers that I've spoken to already, and um, or get ready for uh, appearances that are coming up. So that's what I'm doing is taking that time to really work on that visibility strategy for my business. And then from 4 to 5 p.m. is when I go back and do my connection. So this is where I might hop back into my class again. I'm checking in on Instagram because that's really the only social network that I use. Um, and I'll pop back into my email inbox and check that. So that is an average day. That's how I use batching. Again, I'm time blocking through the whole day um, and doing the things that are intentional, which is to make forward movement on a project, to um, have some kind of, you know, marketing or planting seeds, and then connecting to my community. Okay. And then for a content creation batch day, which I'll send you 
page. Um, so for that, that looks somewhat similar, but there are some definite differences. So the morning itself is pretty similar in that I wake up, I have my coffee, I do my hike, and I get ready. And all of that happens between the time of 6.30 a.m. and 9 a.m., okay? But then this is where things change. So from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., I will make a fresh pot of coffee and I'll dive right into my writing. Okay, so um, one that I did recently was I batched out five email announcements that would talk about that content mastermind that I was sharing with you earlier, right? Um, again, so each of these announcements will be things that will communicate to my community about what the mastermind is, um, and they always will educate, inspire, and entertain in some way. So my goal is always to like make every email I send, whether you decide to work with me or not, to have some kind of value for you, right? Um, and then in that 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. frame, I will build in like two or three 15 minute pleasure breaks. So that could be stretching, walking around, hugging my dog, getting some coffee, etc. Now, please note that I do not check email or social media before I start my content creation. That's key for me. And I talked about that earlier. It, it does make me lose my focus a lot of times. It's just something that I recognize about myself. And I want to be clear and focused. So um, I don't check email on content creation batch days until the end of the day. And social media, same. Now, to set myself up for success, like I said earlier, before I go into this content content creation batch time, I will visit my heat idea list. So like, what am I heated about? What do I want to talk about? What do I want to share with my community? What gives me that heightened emotion? And then I will usually just spend that 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. block doing rough drafts. Like for me to get done polished drafts in that time, not going to happen. So to create five email announcements roughly is what I can do from 9 to 1, okay? Then I'll go have lunch and I'll stretch from 1 to 2 and then I'm back at it from 2 to 4 and this is where I edit. So I have all my rough drafts of those five email announcements and then what I'll do is I'll do the editing. The editing could be you know, just cleaning things up, making them more concise, more compelling. I always do a personality pass, which means just making sure that it's really fun and it's in my voice um, and that nothing feels boring or, or nothing feels like I'm not proud of it. Um, I strip out any jargon that like my my clients and students and audience would not use. Like if it's some kind of word that they would never use, I'm not going to put it in there, right? I have to make sure that it's in their words, which is very important for content creation. Um, and then finally, I always ask the question with every piece of content that I create, am I obsessed with this? So like, am I obsessed with this? If I'm not, I got to do a little, you know, a little bit more tweaking, sparkling, etc. And then from 4 to 5 p.m., I will then check email and then I'll check into my class and I might check social media, etc. So I will note, though, that for those of you that are like, um, there's no way that I can't check email all day, <laughs> I just want to give a little bit of tough love, you know, that remember that you are the business owner and you can do whatever you want. So if you own your business, you can set terms and boundaries however you want. If you're working for someone else, of course, you can't do that. Um, but if you work for yourself then you are allowed to say, you know, on my content creation batch days, which maybe is two days a month, that you're not going to check email to the end of the day. Nothing's going to happen. The, you know, it, nothing's going to explode or, <laughs> or go completely away because you didn't check your email. Um, and it's very easy to put those boundaries on those days anyway, because you could simply just treat them like out of office days. So you could set up an, even an email autoresponder that day that just says, you know, today I'm out of the office working on a project and I will be responding to all emails by 5 p.m. or 4 p.m., right? Um, I guarantee that it would be a very rare instance that something crucial would happen in those hours that, you know, you can't get to later. So again, and you are the business owner, so you can set the terms, conditions, goals, and boundaries around all of this. So you all can do it. All right. Well, I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, I hope that you got something out of it. And I really hope that you guys are going to give batching a shot. Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And um, let me know if you're going to give batching a shot. I'd love, love, love to know. Um, 
All right, let me see. <laughs> I'm reading through some of your distractions. Kids, Facebook, email, food, cat, spouse, <laughs> naughty kitties. <laughs> kitties seem to be naughty. Um, I love it. WhatsApp, yeah, turning that off, turning off Messenger. Uh, Lily says, my own fearful mind telling me I can't do this. Yeah, so sometimes it's, it's getting out of your own way, Lily. That can be a good couple good things to do with that is um, I love journaling personally. So just kind of externalizing all of those irrational thoughts that are going on in your mind, um, putting them into a journal is a way to externalize it. And then you know, you're sort of just feeling them, you're not stuffing them away, and then rationalizing them, right? So if the um, irrational thought is, I can't do this, you write that into a journal. I can't do this and be as specific as possible. I can't do this because, right? Write it all out. It doesn't matter what you say. There's no judgments. This is for your eyes only. And then you go and flip all of those statements into rational statements. So I can't do this because um, I'm a terrible writer, right? And then the rational statement is that you can do this and it's okay if you're not the best writer in the world, you get better at writing by writing. So that is the rational flip of this. So the only way to get better at it is to do it. So once you kind of have that in front of you, it's like, oh, okay, Whew, okay, I can do this. Um, all right, just scrolling through the comments. Cornelia says, I get lost in my own lists. I love that, Cornelia. Um, you should check out a book. It's, it's by my friend, Alex Franzen. It's called The Checklist Book. And um, it's, really, it's, it's really great. So that might help you, actually, um, if you're getting lost in checklists. <laughs> um, Quinn says, would love to know what your community batch days are. So they are things that happen in my obsessed class. So um, it's in my obsessed training program it's something that we do with the students and um, basically we just set aside a day every month and everyone tries to batch in that day so sometimes it's like one hour for some people a lot of people do the full day or they'll do half a day or something like that so it just kind of depends but that's what they are um, and everyone checks in and says what they're batching for the day and i give them cheers or you know if they have questions or they get stuck, they can pop into our community and let me know. So that happens in my class. Um, all right. Bye, Cornelia. Okay, Melissa says, what time do you check email on content batch days? So um, that's, at, that's the day that I don't check it till about 4 p.m. And like I said, I usually what I'll hear from people is they'll say, I can't go that long without checking my email. And my suggestion was that you guys should treat it like being out of the office for the day. So you just can put an auto responder on your email and just say that you are out of the office working on a project today and that you will respond to all emails after 4 p.m. You're welcome, Barb. You're welcome, Brandy, Leah, Lily. Um, yay, Barb. I'm so glad you're going to give it a shot. <laughs> Shelly's scheduling her day. Eleanor. Um, Nancy says, do you have monthly themes for your blog posts or newsletters? I do not. Um, I'm not a huge fan of monthly themes necessarily because that can stifle my creativity, uh, especially when you're trying to access the heat, right? So if, like, if you pick a theme and then you're like not heated about that theme for all of the content it would take to fill that month, then it's going to be kind of a dud. So I like to be way more flexible. Um, sometimes I will have themes just in the sense of like, I know a certain topic is popular and I love talking about it. So like batching is one of them. I love talking about batching, as you can tell. Um, and so if I were to say, I'd like to talk about batching a lot this month, right? Not every piece of content has to be centered around that. But I could say, I'd really like to highlight batching this month because, and, you know, this month it's because we're all sort of dealing with these workspaces that we're not used to, right? It's going to be very helpful. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't like to have rigid monthly themes. Um, they just take, they stifle my creativity. Susan says, I try to batch, but we'll work on stepping up my game. Yeah, NatPat's going to try. Laura says, 
um, very helpful. I'll give batching a shot. Um, all right, Laura, uh, good luck on your interviews. Um, thanks, Susan. Quinn says, I do batching, but this has re-inspired me to do it better. Awesome. I do have a few questions too. Cool, Quinn. Um, and if you have any questions, you can pop them down in the chat. Um, Oh boy, Cornelia has four kids in the house. Yeah, that can be tricky, Cornelia. It may be one of those things that you need to schedule your batch time like before they wake up or after they go to bed if it's really impossible to have any time alone. Like if you don't have, you know, um, someone else in the household that can watch them during that time. So I get it. I, I totally feel for you. Um, it just may be that, you know, you may need to look at your time structure and it's okay. Cause even having like an hour to spare is better than nothing. So don't feel bad about that. Um, all right, cool. Nicholas is taking a shot at it. Um, Eleanor says, WhatsApp and talking to people in between content creation is my distraction. So Eleanor, you are going to get rid of WhatsApp. You're going to turn it off or delete it off your phone for your content batch days. Um, and do not talk to people in between. <laughs> so, so your phone goes off. Um, Melissa, there is a replay available. I'm going to send the video after. Don't worry. Everybody's going to get that. Nancy says, my weekly blog post averaged 700 to 900 words. How can I batch four of them reasonably and choose photos in one day? You probably can't, Nancy. That's why it's different for everybody. So my suggestion was not that you would batch four blog posts like I do. Um, my suggestion is that you do those test batch days so you know how much you can reasonably accomplish in a batch period of time. And then you set your schedule from there. So if you can only accomplish one blog post um, in one batch, day, like you need, let's say a six hour block for one blog post plus photos, then that is your process, right? Nothing wrong with that. Everybody's different. Um, it's just, you have to do the test batch days to know that. So no one can say you can batch X, Y, Z in this period of time. You have to do the test days to know that. Um, Eleanor says, I like to use, is it is possible for me to do this? It makes it softer and less harsh. Like there's possibility. I love that. Um, awesome. Quinn says, how many content batching days do you need a month? That would be up to you, Quinn. So once you do your test day, you should get really clear on what you can accomplish in a day. You may need to do two or three test days to know that. Once you get clear on that, then you can decide how many you need in a month. So all it is is figuring out what content you're delivering for the month, like what have you promised your audience, and then you've done your test days or you will do your test days, and then you just do the math. That's pretty much it. Carrie says, what about posts during this, um, this time, keep them scheduled or related to this time? I highly recommend that um, everyone does acknowledge what's going on in our world with their content right now. So if you, and I don't mean educating people necessarily, it's just like at least acknowledging, just saying like what's going on. Um, so what I would say is if you have things that are already prepared and scheduled, I'd highly recommend at least just like tweaking one of them just to check in on your community, see how they're doing and just say like, you know, I know with the state of the world right now, this can be difficult, but, and then kind of wrap it back to whatever content you're delivering. Again, you don't need to educate people on a pandemic, but you at the very least can just check in on them and see how they're doing. So that's an easy way to do it. Uh, Nikolai says, which activity makes you the most alive in your biz and how has batching taken it to the next level? So I love content creation, um, particularly the way that I do it, which is um, something that I work on with my students all the time, which is like marrying what they're good at professionally with what they're passionate about or what their not so guilty pleasures are. And so we sort of create this little bubble, I call it the swirl, um, and then create from that place. So that's what makes me feel most alive. And I just love creating content for my community that swirls together, like all of, not all of, but my primary interests and passions together. Um, and batching has taken it to the next level simply because I would not get as much done as I do. I certainly wouldn't be a screenwriter if I wasn't batching. There's no way that I would have any time to like put writing time into my world. Um, so I was able to create an entirely new and very successful division of my business through batching. All right. 
<laughs> Ray says, I'm going to go generate some heat and go running. <laughs> I love that. Um, awesome. So many Chelsea, Lisa Marie, everybody's batching. I love it. Um, Nat Pat says, how do you balance between obsessing that your content is not good enough and keep revising it and just getting it out? Um, so it's really about why getting to the crux of why you don't feel like your content is good enough. So that is an internal reason, not an external reason. So it's really just digging into like your own psyche and saying like, what's going on? Why do I feel not good enough? Usually it has nothing to do with your content. It's usually something else in your life um, or some kind of deeper belief about yourself that you're feeling not good enough and it's just working on that so everybody has a different process to kind of like work through that mind mush and uh for me it's therapy it's journaling it's exercise like these things are, are really good self-care pieces um but i know everyone's different so i don't want to say like do those things um but that's really what it is is it's a it's a deeper thing it's not that like this very specific question is like, why is my content not good enough? It's why don't you feel good enough? Like what's really going on and getting to the bottom of that, right? So it's not about the content. It's some deeper belief that you want to work through. Um, awesome. We got Marnie and Nicholas and Melissa batching, batching. Um, Melissa says, how many content batching days do you do a week? So I batch every day. <laughs> so I batch my whole schedule, like I said. Um, so as far as content batching days, like if it's just blocked off for pu pu pure, blah, pure content creation, um, usually I only need to do about three of those a month because I keep my content plan really simple. So I don't have a complicated content plan. And I think that that's actually key um, is to create less content and leverage it better. So that's what I do. Um, I create less and leverage more. So I'm able to get away with having, you know, less days where I'm dedicated just to batching content for my community. And then the content that I do create I just repurpose it and reuse it throughout the week throughout the month um, and that way it's more helpful obviously to me and my schedule and it's more helpful to my community because these are repetitive messages that they need to see um, you're welcome yay Nancy um, Tanya scheduled a test batch day to her calendar Lori did too yay um, Eleanor says, mindset coaching and self-coaching has helped me so much in overcoming this. It's awesome, Eleanor. Um, awesome, Nat Pat. I'm so glad that that helped. And um, yay, Nancy. Yay, Melissa. Love the repurpose idea. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's something that I work with. And, and I'm going to work with as well with my content mastermind is like all about this notion of creating less and repurposing more. So obviously we all have different content plans. We all have different businesses. There's not one formula that everyone can use. Um, if, it, if that was the case, that would be super easy. <laughs> um, but it's really great that, you know, the, the thought process that you want to have for all of you guys is like, what can I create for my community? Like, can I create, you know, one really awesome piece of content per week and then leverage that across all platforms, right? Instead of like constantly creating, coming up with new things because people need these messages over and over and over and over again, right? Um, so that's that. Um, Lori says, are you solo or do you have a team? So nope, I'm solo. Um, I do use contractors in various ways for various things. Uh, so just so you understand how my business operates, though, I have a very different business than most people. So I have about 60% of my business, 50 to 60% is screenwriting. You cannot outsource screenwriting at all. That's illegal. Um, and so that is fully me. There's no one else I can outsource that to. And then on the other end of my business, um, like I said, I do use contractors for different things, not for writing. I'm a writer, don't need that. Um, but I definitely use, you know, contractors for things that I am no good at. So an example is um, we have lovely Shelly uh, Cohen on the call. And so she does design for me. Um, I have a web developer that does, you know, website work for me. I, you know, do occasionally 
bring on people around busy times for launches and things to run ads or et cetera. But um, they're not, I don't consider them my team. I know some people use contractors and consider them their team. I don't and can't because I live in California. We have really strict contractor, independent contractor laws. Um, and there's things you can't do. Like I can't make someone that's not my actual employee to like show up on a call with me at a certain time. Like there's a lot of laws around that. So, um, so it's just me. Uh, I would, I actually will probably um, in the next few months be hiring an employee um, that will be like on my payroll, et cetera. So um, I'm just sort of finalizing what that role looks like and just being very intentional with it because I like to keep things simple and streamlined if you haven't noticed already because I feel like I talk about that all the time. Um, you're welcome, Shelly. All right, I'm going to give it a moment to see uh, if anybody else has any comments, questions, anything you want to pop in the chat. This was so much fun today. Thank you guys so much for joining me um, and taking out time from your very busy and crazy schedules, I'm sure. And I do hope that you give batching a shot. I'm going to send everybody the recording of this video later today, as well as um, I will just send photos of those two pages in my planner. <laughs> so you can just have an idea. Obviously, all our days look differently, um, but this is the way that my day looks. All right. Um, thanks, Mel. Thanks, Barb. Um, Oh, Lily says, this is one of the most helpful Zoom calls out there I've participated in. Thank you, Melissa. Love your obsessed podcast with Alex Franz. And oh, thanks, Lily. Um, we just dropped season two. So, <laughs> so you got six new episodes to listen to if you haven't already. Um, that is our very silly podcast, which we love. <laughs> and we batched. Um, awesome. Thanks, Mel. Thanks. Sasha, Nikolai, Tanya, Eleanor, Aaron, you guys are all awesome and totally rock Shelly. Um, Brandy, yay. All right, I would bring Lily up one more time, but she's so, she's sleeping so well. I feel like I don't want to disturb her. I'll send you guys a picture, a cute Chih Tzu picture. Um, all right, thanks, Snappot. All right, thank you, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and we'll wrap up and, um, please keep me posted on how batching is going for you. You can hit me up by email. Um, I'm on Instagram, melissa.casera. So follow me there. If you're batching, I'd love for you to take a picture, um, share it. That's great content showing people behind your seat, behind the scenes. So you could take a picture of like your batch setup use it on Instagram stories, um, tag me, and I'll give you some cheers. <laughs> so I'd love to hear how it goes for you. But thank you all so much for joining me today. Happy batching and have a beautiful weekend. Bye, everybody.